Paradise season 11 finale, Neville and his team must work out how a chess player is poisoned just by touching a piece on the board. Meanwhile, Neville decides whether he wants to start dating again, while Selwyn reunites with an important figure from his past. Now that season 11 has come to a close, we sat down with Ralph Little to talk all things Sam Marie. Ralph, thank you so much for joining us today. It's a pleasure to have you. Uh, my pleasure. Um, obviously, we're on the finale. I feel like this season has gone so fast and things have gotten very Queen's Gambit. Um, <laughs> yes, they have. With, yeah. with the chess mystery. So, I mean, how did you find filming season 11 and what did you make of the finale? I loved it. <laughs> Absolutely loved it. Um, I think um, Chantal is an amazing addition to the cast. I think she's wonderful. Of course, it was sad to see Josie leave, um, but she felt it was the right time. But she's, you know, sadly missed. We sadly missed when we were filming it, sadly missed by um, the audience as well and, uh, and me of course. Uh, but Chantal is w an amazing addition, she's absolutely fabulous so um, that's been fantastic. The finale, I re thought it was a great one, a particularly good episode. You know we had a skydive this year, um, uh, we had a, you know, a boat last year and, uh, and a chess tournament, you know, who would think and yet it looks amazing. The, the the design of it was was fantastic. We we ended up shooting in a hotel, so we had to decamp from what day hey where we normally stay, and we, the whole crew was kind of in this location. And um, I just think it's uh, I just think it worked really well. I think it's a, a, it's a, maybe one of my favourite episodes. I think it's great. It was, it was a bit different as well. Like Taj, sort of we we spoke to him last week, and he teased that it would be a bit different, and it was because you kind of just like you all gathered to the one suspect, which is weird in itself because normally it's very Agatha Christie vibes where you've got all the suspects gathered together, but it was a bit yeah. of a um, change of pace. Yeah, well, the the, the new one, you know, the, the final scene where I I stand stand there and be like, well, it couldn't have been you because you had an alibi, <laughs> yeah. but then we found out that this, and then you sort of go through them one by one. Um, that as a as a formula as a, of the genre works really really well. But one of the things I think that this show does particularly well is always finds new ways to approach it. And then, like you say, in this one, the the formula was tweaked slightly, so it was much more honed in on this one guy. But I thought the the final twist of it as well was incredibly satisfying, incredibly smart. And one of the bits that annoys me is not annoys me. One of the bits that always amuses me is that um, at the end I have to sort of nod to Taj and say, well, you know, take him away, arrest him. And um, and obviously that didn't happen this time. And I thought it was really quite poignant, um, but it did mean that oh, a lot of the time, you know, Taj is, is a slight fella, you know, he's not a big guy. And sometimes he has to go, Taj, take him away. And this giant suspect stands up and you just see Taj going, come on then, let's go. So he was saved, he was saved having to do that this time. I wanted to ask as well about how you thought Florence and Neville's relationship ended, because obviously everyone was rooting for them to get together. Were you a little yeah. disappointed that it didn't go down that road? Like, what was your response to it? I guess the, the writers and, and, and producers of the show, they can't let him get, they can't let him be too happy. <laughs> uh, that, uh, to be absolutely honest, that's kind of, I guess, the, one of the formulas of the show. I mean, we're already talking about a guy who's lucky enough to go out there and live in this paradise, literally called Death in Paradise. Like, he has to have some hardship. And, you know, he's managed to, through, with Florence's help, he's managed to overcome a lot of the difficulties that he, that he had. Um, uh, he's not conquered them because they still exist, but he's just decided he's going to just, you know, roll with life and, and, and take it as it comes. And it's a huge, I think, a really subtle and lovely journey that they, that they, that they wrote and I was lucky enough to play out. Mm. But once he got that sorted, then, you know, I think for him to then find love with this extraordinarily charismatic and charming and intelligent and beautiful woman would have been a bit like, oh, come on now. We can't, we can't be too... <laughs> Because the truth is, I think once the detective, or once Neville in particular, if he's too happy and he's too settled, I, I don't think as much as audiences, as much as we feel that's what we want to see, you, you know, you, we're not going to want to enjoy watching a guy who's just having a great time every week. Like, oh, he's the luckiest man in the world. He just wanders around solving cases. It's like, uh, so, you know, I, I understand the choice. I was sad for Neville, but um, I understood it as a, as, a, as a dramatic choice. And I think it probably, I think it was the right one. Sure. But yes, love, love being in the air. I mean, the, you know, the commissioner and, and all that sort of mystery and how all that unraveled and that's that backstory that we had no idea about. Um, it was, it was, it was fact beautiful actually. And you, you, you don't, we haven't, it's taken a while for us to kind of find out more about the commissioner. He's a very enigmatic character played by a very enigmatic man. Mm -hmm. And, um, and so to hear these little snippets of where he comes from and what is, what his loves were, including like romantically, but also loves the island and is committed and devoted to his duty to the island and all that kind of thing. Um, I, I thought it was beautifully done and, a, and an amazing, um, 
an amazing ang angle and, and, and narrative for, for the character and for Don to play. Listen, Don Warrington is the most charismatic man in the world. So for him to kind of show that and just be this sort of incredibly um, charming and, and soulful and insightful character that you don't really ha have often got to see from the commission that much. Mm. I think, I'm sure Don really enjoyed playing that and sort of got to exercise his uh, acting chops because he's a sensational actor and uh, I, I thought it was beautifully done. I honestly thought it was it was like watching my dad kiss someone on screen now. I was like, when yeah. They <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh no. Uh, yeah. My like, eyes. Like, Commissioner can't do that. He's a he's an authority figure. He shouldn't yeah. have a personal life, for goodness sake. <laughs> so, yeah, I think he enjoyed it. <laughs> uh, playing that, I don't mean the kiss specifically. That would be kind of creepy. I think John enjoyed <laughs> John enjoyed playing that role. When I'm filming the show, it always looks absolutely amazing. Obviously, you're filming out in the Caribbean; like it looks incredible. What's your favourite thing about filming? Swimming in the Caribbean Sea at lunchtime, in between. It, particularly yeah, not bad. It's all right, isn't it? It's not yeah, too bad. it's a constant battle with the heat and a constant like costume department having to blow dry my shins if I've sweated through the trousers. That's happened once, by the way. Like, how mad is that? And the costume department's like, yeah, can we just need to get a hairdryer on those shins. I'm like, yeah, that's what I want, more heat. There was definitely, there was certainly one uh, in that ep episode last year uh, with Jason Manford, that episode. It was so hot on that day, on that terrace, that the cameraman, the cameraman would never usually say, uh, cut the camera operator would never usually say, uh, uh, cut or can we just pause for a second but he's given a little bit of leeway on this show because he can see through the lens exactly what's going on and three or four times during the course of that long scene he'd be like sorry um we might want to get a sweat check because i was just poor it was like i was underwater so i'm going oh, yeah. and the reason that it couldn't have been you uh jonathan was because you uh, stop okay <laughs> okay can we and then you carry on so you know it's, it's not without its challenges but um the shack is, is a, a challenging place to film because you've got the heat, you've got the sand, you know, this gets yeah. the camera lenses, they have to be managed very, very carefully. Um, there's no air, con air conditioning in there, the wind can sort of come in off the, off the sea. The waves, the sound of the waves is a technicality because if you're in the middle of a line and then a wave crashes over the line, that's not usable for sound and et cetera, et cetera, mm. et cetera. But it's also right on, on the sea, on the beach. So if you've got an hour for lunch, which you sometimes do, there's a fair few of us will bring our swimming kit and uh, and we'll have lunch as quickly as we can. And then you're swimming in the Caribbean Sea going, I wonder what other people are doing on their lunch break. It's like pretty, yeah. that's definitely a highlight. I did want to ask um, about Neville's allergies in it because obviously oh, yeah. when you started, I think it was, it was, a, it was a real, I guess it was like we were new to the character, we were getting to know him. And I think it was like, not pushed, but you know, it was a lot more present than maybe it has been in the last series. Do you think that's because he's sort of getting used to the island? He's sort of, I mean, yeah, like, what, what, what was your response to that? One of the things I think is a bit of a misconception about all, all those allergies and stuff, which I was, I'm always keen to dispel, is he's not a hypochondriac. Sometimes mm -hmm. people have gone, oh, he's a hypochondriac, he's got this illness, that illness. But he's not. Uh, we discussed this, the producers and the writer tonight, right from the start. The problems that he faces are very, very real. He does come out in rashes. He does have terrible reactions to sand fly bites and get hospitalized. It's not in faking being in hospital. Yeah. But the facts, we, we, we figured out that when he was younger, when he was a kid and all of these things were present, rather than doing what some people or a lot of people might do, which is go, I'll just live with it and maybe I'll grow out of them or maybe I'll, you know, it is what it take the rough with the smooth. He started to live a life where it was like, look, um, um, an example that we use was Neville is not a two-dimensional nerd. Neville might, when he was young, might be, might, Neville might be a decent footballer, but yeah. he would never have gone out to play as a kid because he would be, he would be too afraid of being allergic to the grass. So that's, that's, a, that's a, a very, that's a very neat illustration of what we were trying to do with him, which is, it's not that he like is incapable and it's not that he's like this pathetic loser who's always in, in trouble. It's just like, he had built a life by the, before he arrived in San Marie where he just stopped taking any risks at all, even the smallest risk. He, he, we, we had this idea of a character, his life back in Manchester is, he has mates, good mates, um, you know, he's not a loner or anything, but he can only meet his mates in one pub because he knows exactly what, uh, you know, air freshener they use, he knows exactly what they clean the seats with, and it's not worth going to a different pub because it might just be too much hard work. And so he built this life, which was essentially a, a bubble, or if you like, a sort of almost a prison of his own making, because he got so used to going, 
there's no there's too much hassle to try and do anything else so mm -hmm. arriving in a caribbean island was this huge huge challenge for him genuinely physically it was a huge challenge for him but he had to break this psychology of going well i'm just not worth the risk anymore and that's where his relationship with florence was so so lovely and so borne out so beautifully was that she was the one who really encouraged him to go look what, what's the point in living half a life you know yeah. come out and i'll help you and you try new things and he does try new things and to be honest more often than not it goes horribly wrong and then he's got a you know comes out in a rash <laughs> because he can't eat chili or but you know what he's trying to and he's he's now somebody who's like this island is full of challenges and a lot of hassle a lot of the time but you know what it's worth it because it's a full life that i'm living and and why do anything else Thank you so much for joining us. Don't forget to like and subscribe and remember to head over to hellomagazine.com for more Death in Paradise content. Bye.